I've often found what makes it so hard for Muslims to explain their faith to Christians is that Christians don't really have anything to relate it to. And so there's just this sea of strange looks and odd doings and weird prayer forms, whereas in fact the closeness of the two is nearly astounding. If you think each religion is based on a doctrine and then on a methodology. Now the Christian doctrine or creed, which is said every Sunday, the Apostles' Creed, has so much in common with the Muslim creed that it's, it's nearly far out, you know. I mean, it, the Christians begin, uh, we believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of course, the Muslim perspective, you know, there is God, the creator. Uh, then the Christian says, and we believe in his son, Jesus Christ, our, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, conceived of the Holy Spirit, and then, um, and who will come to judge both the quick and the dead. Well, of course, Muslims, of course, accept uh, Jesus being born of the Virgin Mary. They love that whole idea of the God breathing his spirit into Jesus, the, and also the Ruh al Kadus, the Holy Spirit. The whole idea of, um, of judgment is uh, the Jesus coming. He's expected, the second coming of Jesus is expected by the Muslims, just as it's expected by the Christians. I, I'm sometimes thinking that the reason all the Muslims are naming their daughters Miriam or Mary these days is because the Muslims feel the world has gotten so bad that maybe the second coming must be near. If you go to Jerusalem, it's quite astounding. Oh, also I forgot in the Christian creed, speak of, of Jesus was resurrected. Well, of course, in the Quran when Jesus is born, and, and it's described in the chapter of the Quran called Mary, as he's just as he's born, he's able to speak, and he says, Peace be upon the day I am born, and shall be raised alive. 